Hi everyone and welcome, it's Ruth here at Artful Stampin. Sorry I'm on a little bit later this evening. Uh, it's just been a... Yeah, just, it is what it is. I'm here now. Right, so I'd like to do some kind of one sheet wonder, although I've just picked up my Stamparatus and thought that I would like to do something a little bit alternative with these. Now, at the moment, well, recently I've been using lots of floral stamps with the Stamparatus, but I'm thinking, shall we just see what happens if we have a little play with the Stamparatus and doing a one sheet wonder and, um, I don't know, just, just see what else can it do. Yeah, will you, will you let me play, guys? So, um, hi everybody who's coming on live. So this is a live video. My name is Ruth and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK. More specifically, I'm in Mid Wales. And it's great to have your company. And I know that uh, there are new people joining my channel all the time. So welcome to you if you've not been on here before. Um, if you don't know me, I'm a fairly metal crafter, so I end up spending a bit of time just clearing my desk. Because I have things like, you know, cups of water and, you know, all sorts of things. Right, so. I, sometimes I, I get an idea for the Stamparatus, then I have a go and then it doesn't work. But that's fine, that's fine. Um, I like the idea of playing with the fact that you can move this plate from here to there because theoretically that means you can stamp something at that point, have a stamp there, here, then move it that to there. So what was there will now be across there. Which is interesting when it comes to One Sheet Wonder. And I did have some really lovely comments about previous One Sheet Wonders using the Stamper... No, sorry, not One Sheet Wonders, but my use of the Stamparatus because I know that some of you guys really do like using it and you need to use it because of various mobility issues. So, let's do some experimenting, shall we? Let's see what happens if we place... Your standard size cardstock, so if you're in the States, that would be your, you know, your standard letter size. And here in the UK, it's A4. Let me just get these the right way up. So I might put that there, like that. Stamp that down. Hi, Steph. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hi, Janet. Who else is here? Gail, Wendy, Sheila, Donny, Joyce, Tina, Rhonda, Cheryl, Jana, Cindy and Linda. Hello everybody. Okay, if you guys have got any bright ideas, please do go ahead and let me know because um, this is all a bit of a new experiment. So let's see what happens when we do this. So think that up. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. What what have I got going on here? Right, switch those off. Let me just check. I've got this phone switched off. Yeah, there we go. Right. And then, what about if we move the paper? Oh, I know what. I've not used this yet. This is the. I can't remember what it's called. Janice, what's this called? This is the normal foam mat, and this is like the enhanced foam mat with um, grid lines on it. So what about we do that and we move it by a centre increment upwards. Ta-da! Look at that. Okay. Then I take my thing out, put it back in, you know what, and I know it's going into each other, but I'm just going to do it and see what happens, okay? I'm just going to see what happens. This is a bit of an experiment. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to move it one centimetre onwards, like that. Okay? Then we're going to shift that round. I know it looks like a hot mess, 
Oops, didn't ink that up properly. We'll get there though. I've got you guys keeping me company, haven't I? So today's video is brought to you by uh, Experiments Are Us. Okay? <laughs> What's the, um... Deluxe foam mat. Thank you, Janice. I knew you'd know. How's the jet lag? Are you... Ah, oh, now what happened there? That didn't happen over there, did it? Oh well, all oh, right, okay, hold on. Yes, I know what happened. I'll move the paper in a slightly different way. Okay, that's fine. So, move that one and move the centimetre. Okay, so what am I missing? Done that one. Oh, I moved the... Ah, so you can move your paper and you can move your... Ooh. Thanks, Linda. I knew you'd have my back. See, I think you guys just like to watch me making this so that you don't have to. So I've done that one. I've done... I've done... No, I haven't done that one. How did that work out then? Or did I do that like that? Ooh, now this is interesting. So that's a lot more... That's quite a few different ways of... Okay, this is interesting. Right, so. Right, so I've done that one. But I've not done that one. You were looking for a happy anniversary stamp. Um, there's one in Well Said. Well, there's two. There's their separate stamps. There's one in Beautiful Bouquet, I think, Janice. Yes, interesting abstract. Yeah, Beautiful Bouquet. Have you got it? It's quite a small one. There, look. It's quite it's lovely font, but it's quite small. Okay, right, so I've done that one. Done that one. Done that one. Then let me just double check. Done that one. Moved it along. Done that one. Done that one. Yeah, okay. Right now, if you wanted to, you could move the actual stamparatus on. See, look, I moved it on an increment. And we could do some extra stamping along here. So let's see how that. Oh, no, I think I probably need to do it one more increment because it's really starting to go right over those trees, so we don't want that. Let's do it that way. And then if we move this up by one centimetre. In the state, are you guys in the States, is your one is your one in inches, not um, centimetres? I presume it is. Which is quite nice, really, because they don't always do things in centimetres. Hi Gina. Well, that's quite a simple way to get a tree kind of thing going on there, isn't it? OK, 
guess if you wanted to, you could maybe move that on one more. I would just say experiment, you know, just experiment, see, see what works. Yeah, see what works. Sorry, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I wanted to use some of this, but um, having a look to see if anything else here would work. Because if we cut this into hmm. hi, Monica. Nice to see you. What would happen if I put mm. sorry, I'm still thinking. It takes time for me to think. Okay, so if I put that as far to the edge there as possible and at the seven meter seven centimeter mark there, pick that up. And put my paper in at seven by seven. I think I'll need to use a magnet for this bit. No, seven by five. Hi, Deborah. Right. Go for something a bit paler. Let's go for a bit of soft sea foam. <laughs> That's brilliant, Steph. See, I was wondering then if I move this plate to here. I could then put that there. And I could get it going that way. Right, okay, so it was worth you waiting for me to think that through. So look. Ta-da! Right, let's see if that would work on here now. So seven. It is One Sheet Wonder Day, although this is a bit of a slower One Sheet Wonder. So if anyone is watching this on the replay, you may want to just fast forward some of this. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. And then we flip this round to here. Put this at seven centimetres and five there. And again. Pop it down. And that's how you get your bit of a border thing going on. Now, could we get that going on there as well? Oh, we can. Right, so we want it at seven again, but this time at... No, I think I'm going to put it at two. I know it's going to overlap a little bit, but it means then I can put another one in there. Right, I know this may be a little bit boring, but the reason I am taking the time to do this is because, as I said earlier, there are, I know there are a few of you who really rely on the Stamparatus to do your stamping because you've got 
you know, maybe issues with your wrists and things like that. So I think for you guys, you know, you just might find this helpful to play around with your position, all the positionings and stuff like that to kind of get it to work for you. So let's put that in at seven centimeters. Put that there. Cindy says, glad you're doing this because I've had that idea, just wasn't sure how to go about it. Ah, okay. Right, so put that around to there. Up to seven. Down to two and seven. No, not two and seven. What do I want there? Is it seven? Yes. Oh, there we go, Gina. Gina, this is your night. Right. Okay. Now, I'm going to use something like this. Okay, so I'm, I'm imagining that these are going to get cut up. So... Well, this is abstract, okay? This is abstract. Please don't go, oh, that doesn't make sense. The trees aren't the right way up. This is one big experiment, guys. So I think what I might do is after I've made this one, I will then come back and do a slightly different video so that we can separate the two techniques out. So I want my, I want that there. And I'm going to go quite dark. I want to go for... Oh, I'm sure I'd early espresso that earlier. I did. I was showing a friend of mine. Ah, here it is. It's right in front of me. Oh, Steph. You want me to show... Your, your message has been held in review. Do you want me to reveal it? <laughs> Oh dear, modern art, I know, I know. I don't mind modern art. Okay. Actually, it's just, just a little reminder to everybody that whatever you type on here, you, you do have the right to be able to remove it because you typed it, but just remember that it is, it is out there. So if you read, if you type something and later on you think, mm, I don't think I want that information left on the internet, please do go ahead and re you know remove it. I'm I'm I c I'm not the police. I'm not the not the police. You know what I mean? I'm not the YouTube police. I'm not going to um, come after you. But I'm just aware that sometimes this is more to do with personal information, really. That if you if you reveal things about yourself and you know in in the heat of the chat and you're just chatting away. Um, like things like locations and personal information. If you want to go back and delete stuff, please do, um, because you know I I have no 
control over who may be watching this video in 10 years time you know that's the reality okay so what happens if i do that oh actually i don't mind that i think i'm gonna go with that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everybody gets modern art. Um, it for me it helped that I did study a bit of it. I did art history at, at uni, so understanding the context in which some of this art was produced. I think it's very tempting when you look at a piece and think, oh well, it's just made from rubbish, and what's the point of it? Um, and you would be right in thinking that, but it, it's more about the meaning behind things. But things like it's worth studying people like. Uh, Picasso and because that was the start of the modernist movement um, and without realising it we owe a lot of how we view the world now uh, in the 21st century well 20th 21st century to modernism so it, it, you know yes you, you may have an emotional kind of like reaction to some modern art and think oh just don't like it However, if you ever want to study it further, I do recommend you do because there's more to it than meets the eye. Right. Um, how are we going to get the stamp over there now? We just do that. <coughs> Why did I not think of that earlier? You like Pollock? Ah, oh, interesting. Now, Pollock's an interesting kind of study in how um, what is seemingly chaotic actually will always become ordered. <laughs> yeah, very interesting, his work. Do you know if people can search your comments using your name? I've got no idea, Deborah. Oh, I moved it slightly. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Right. I wasn't concentrating, I was reading comments. <laughs> Guess I wasn't using my magnet. Get my magnet in. All right, how's this? Is Sheila on here. Sheila, Sheila. Dear Sheila. Yes, she is. Hi, Sheila. Is my sound better tonight? I know I'm, I am making a little bit more effort to speak more clearly, but I have actually got my microphone plugged in. Look, do, can you hear me through the microphone clearer? Hi, Jackie. So is my mic, is my mic, I just spoke into my, look. Look, I'm speaking into my mic. Yes, much clearer. Oh, good. Right, so then we flip that one to there. I don't know why I took the magnet off. Ah, no, I don't like that. No, I don't want that. I'm just happy with that where it is. I guess if it was a different type of stamp, it might work better. Like if it was a floral or something, it wouldn't matter that it overlapped. But I don't really want that overlapping the building. So I'm going to leave it. Put it back and turn. I've already done that one. Done that one. Done that one. And done that one. And I'll put it in here. I guess it's to do with the angle of where it's at. So if I see if I do that onto there, it's going to create a double 
something there. And I, I mean, I guess I could move this up to there and do it there. See, if this was... Okay, I'm just not looking at the right way. I've done that one. No, I don't want to do that one. I guess it's to do with the limitations of the gadget. Like, if that went that way... Yeah, see, if that went like that, I could do that. Oh, no, I've done that one. What am I talking about, then? Well, that still would be the only... I don't, Deborah. You're so funny. You 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 speak like you think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> ah, that's so hilarious. <laughs> Can I be really clear? <laughs> I do not know what I'm doing. This is the first time I've ever done this. This is one big fat experiment. Okay, just letting you know. I'm making this mess so that you don't have to. <laughs> oh, it moved. All right, let me just push it down really hard. Trust the process, right? There we go. Okay, okay. Right, where's that tree? I'd like to do something with the tree, but play with our corners a little bit more. So what if we... So if I did that, I did that there, I did that there, I did that there. Okay, let's look at the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five. No, let's go six, uh, seven by seven. Actually, where's my stamp and artist paper? Um, it'd be easier with that, wouldn't it? Oh dear, sorry. Lots of knocking of stuff. Okay, I'm going to do this in centimetres, but then I'm going to do it in inches for you, for you, you others. Okay, so that's the seven mark. Have to sharpen somewhere. I'll tell you what that is in inches. Yeah, you us. You us people. That's two and three quarter. Okay, so go and put my paper in there. No, I'm gonna. Hmm. You can experiment as much as you want when you get home, all right? When you get home. I'm talking to you guys like you're at a class in my house. Okay, so in inches, put your paper in at one 
and a half inches and then your tree is sitting there at just under what's that one two, two that's basically two and two and three quarter inches never thought of using a sheet of paper to stamp an example yeah the tree is from the power of hope stamp set what do you mean an example <laughs> Deborah, she's just cracked up following me merrily into the dark okay i'm just going to put a mark here so i know where i put my paper so this is where the, the grid paper really comes in useful because you can record your experiments like this you know yes you're all with me now okay and then what i want to do is sort of twist this paper sort of like that I don't know why, I just want it to curve round, so, ah, so I'm going from that point there to that point there. Right, magnet. Ooh, things sticking. Hmm, no. Let it further along. No. That'll do. I know it is. Ge it is all about geometry. Sorry, guys. Now I'm gonna have to figure it out for the other side. So I'm one end from. That's my rubber. <laughs> Yeah, I that I could do that, Sheila, but what I want to try and do is create a system which is repeatable so that you don't have to keep doing that because if you can create a system where you can create a template like this and you can just keep that, then I think for... I don't know, um, is it Gina that has issues with her hands? Would you rather move a piece of paper or move a stamp each time? Yeah, I'm, I think I am making it hard for the setup, but as I said, once it's done, it's done. Because I'm thinking of creating, this is all one big ploy, you know, Sheila. I'm going to try and create a plastic template or something so that you will keep that like this. And every time you want to do this, you will have your template. That's not quite right, but anyway. Hi Ellen. Okay, so now we'll put this in here. I know I've not done done that quite right. That's got to go. So that goes one, two, three, and into that corner there. So that's got to go. Ah, yeah, I didn't do that quite right. That should have gone to that point there. Okay, knew I knew it wasn't quite. I'll get it right for the next one. Come on, paper. 
to be honest Sheila normally I would do this in the privacy of my own home and then I'd come on and show you guys and you all go wow she figured it out but you wouldn't see the hours of me doing this stuff like I did have you guys ever seen the kaleidoscope um template I did when the stamparatus first came out I, I tell you what, I did some measuring and figuring out and before I went on and did that video. Uh, no, because we are working to a right angle. No, I had the wrong measurement. Yeah, but you see, we're friends now. I thought you could take it. <laughs> There we go, see, oops, <laughs> Oop, got a bit enthusiastic, knocked, knocked you off, there we go, that worked didn't it, right so if I do this in sharpie, where's my ruler, so that goes there, Goes there, and we go from that point there. To that point there. And then go from that point there. there. Oh, just look up um, Stamparatus, not now, Stamparatus Kaleidoscope Template. Um, that was quite a highly watched video from a few years ago, that one. It was when the Stamparatus first came out. Oh, no, I'm not. I took it off. <laughs> this is just paper. No, I promise my deluxe pad is somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, it's over there. Yeah. Oh, so you've seen them, Cheryl. The templates, or sorry, you, you've you've done your own kaleidoscopes. Yeah, there's the template that. Oh, am I keep? Do I keep knocking that? Sorry, guys. I've got like two lots of wires going on at the moment. Yeah, you need a piece of acetate, basically, or, the, you know, the clear plastic that Stampin' Up! do, that'll do. And you just draw out your own, really. You can purchase plastic templates from various people, but I just thought, you know, you can make your own. So, there we go. This is for any, any size paper you want, to be honest. If you wanted to do this on a square piece of paper... You could do that because it you're putting a square in, yeah? I mean, the, the other tech bits, yes, it was on a rectangle and it's all a bit of an experiment, but um, the whole point with this is that you can just put any square in. I mean, if you're doing a 12 by 12 inch, you'd want to kind of get right in there, but the problem would be to get around the corner, you'd have to move your paper off the template, then you'd squash your paper. So that is why I started at this point here, so that you've got the space to do that and that, okay? And perhaps what I could have done is actually gone right to the corner instead. Um, 
or just experimented with creating an angle first and then worried about the the stamp afterwards so for example let's have a think why okay can anyone tell me why on this grid paper we've got one inch you know one inch seven inch one inch seven inch there but why is that line thicker is that is this because I don't know is it a fault or what I don't I don't quite understand Okay, this time, excuse me, I'm reversing the technique. I'm actually going to create my template first and then figure figure it out afterwards, although I need my other template to get an idea. move this off my apparatus to do this. Oh, I've run out of spaces to put things, it's on my lap now. I wonder what would happen if I go from there to there. Go from there to there. Okay. Bring this back in. Hi, Wendy. The inch mark. Well, it's well, it's not really because that's look. That's got the four increments for the quarters. One, two, three, four, and then you get to this one. It goes one, two, three, thicker, and then four on there, and it's a little bit thinner. I'm a bit baffled. Anyway. Another storm stuff. Yikes. It's short, it's short of an inch that side. Oh, you're right, because look. It is not much up to that. should be up there. That should be there. That's not right then. Because that means we'll be making mistakes. It lines up perfectly on that side. in some paper. Let's just stop talking about inches and so it's me. I know it's me, it's my fault. Right, 
let's get my trees back in here. Bring back my foam mat, stick that underneath. Oh, really, Cheryl? Oh, so it's not just me. Hmm, it's very strange. Okay, that's a fair point. Quilters. So much wisdom comes from the quilter community. Because you guys do a lot of measuring, don't you? Let's face it. I love how one craft can inform another one. There's Dennis and then there'll be another one. Start with an E, won't it? They always change. It's always they go, go through the letters of the alphabet, don't they? Ah, no, see, technically I can't do that. Oh, that was a bit silly of me. I was trying to be all clever then. That's interesting. It's interesting what the trees do. All right, so ignore that line completely. What we should be doing is aiming for the corner, which is where the, that's where the paper can only go. Get my tip X. So ignore that. So have I run out? I might have run out. Nope, not run out. Well, Sue, it might not be worth you rewinding that because this has been one big experiment tonight. So I think I'm going to stop and just do an old-fashioned one-sheet wonder. But before I do that, I'm going to hop off and come straight back on and carry on with these stamps and do just a kind of let's just play with stamps sheet okay thank you all for your patience with me tonight i really do appreciate it and like i said it's this tonight has been very much about a process of getting to this point um so um if it's not to your liking and you want to give me a thumbs down that's fine <laughs> um it's it's just this is this is kind of what happens behind the scenes to be honest of in my craft room when i have an idea and and, and probably lots of demonstrators craft rooms or people who create videos you know this is this is the kind of the churning over and the 
cogitating and the experimenting and the ripped up pieces of paper and, and all that kind of thing. You know, this is me being real, really, about how how, how this process happens. So um, stay by your phones or your tablets or whatever, but I will literally say goodbye and for now and um, come back again. Um, I was using a Tipex tape thing. You just kind of like pull it. It's a bit like a tape runner, but it's just Tipex. It's a bit, in terms of eco-friendliness, it's a bit rubbish because it's just plastic and, you know, I'll have to get that recycled in a special place, but it's quite nifty. So there we go. You did the same making a gift bag today. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not I'm not unhappy with the results. I'm quite happy with this one. And I think it's it's gonna be useful for me to experiment with it because typically when you're using the stamp apparatus we tend to use square pieces of paper, don't we? But I'm I am really determined to try and find ways in which we can just put the piece of paper in, get results really easily and quickly and be happy with them with the Stamparatus because you know it's a tool that the tool is meant to help us rather than us being completely dictated to by the tool so that's that's kind of my aim really to try and, and find better ways to use it um, so there we go right I will be back oh okay yes I've just seen your message Diane thanks I will have a look now right I'll see you back in a mo Bye guys, thank you. I'll leave that with you, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Bye.